Philip VI of France. Philip VI French, Philip, 17 November 1293, 22 August 1350, called the fortunate French, La Fortune and of Valois, was the first king of France from the house of Valois, reigning from 1328 until his death in 1350. Philip's reign was dominated by the consequences of a succession dispute. When King Charles Roman IV of France died in 1328, the nearest male relative was his nephew King Edward Roman III of England, but the French nobility preferred Charles's paternal cousin Philip. At first, Edward seemed to accept Philip's succession, but he pressed his claim to the throne of France after a series of disagreements with Philip. The result was the beginning of the Hundred Years' War in 1337. After initial successes at sea, Philip's navy was annihilated at the Battle of Slies in 1340, ensuring that the war would occur on the continent. The English took another decisive advantage at the Battle of Cressy 1346, while the Black Death struck France, further destabilizing the country. In 1349, King Philip VI bought the province of Dauphine from its ruined ruler the Dauphin Humbert Roman II of Viennois and entrusted the government of this province to his grandson, King Charles V. Philip VI died in 1350 and was succeeded by his son King John Roman II, the Good. Early Life Little is recorded about Philip's childhood and youth, in large part because he was of minor royal birth. Philip's father Charles, Count of Valois, the younger brother of King Philip Roman IV of France, had striven throughout his life to gain the throne for himself, but was never successful. He died in 1325, leaving his eldest son Philip as heir to the counties of Anjou, Maine, and Valois. Accession to the Throne In 1328, Philip VI, first cousin King Charles Roman IV, died without a son, leaving his widow Jean of Ivieux pregnant. Philip was one of the two chief claimants to the throne of France. The other was King Edward Roman III of England, who was the son of Charles's sister Isabella of France and his closest male relative. The Estates General had decided twenty years earlier that women could not inherit the throne of France. The question arose as to whether Isabella should have been able to transmit a claim that she herself did not possess. The assemblies of the French barons and prelates and the University of Paris decided that males who derive their right to inheritance through their mother should be excluded according to Salic law. As Philip was the eldest grandson of King Philip Roman III of France, through the male line he became regent instead of Edward, who was a matrilineal grandson of King Philip Roman IV and great-grandson of King Philip Roman III during the period in which Charles Roman IV's widow was waiting to deliver her child, Philip VI rose to the regency with support. He formally held the regency from 9 February 1328 until 1 April, when Jean of Ivieux gave birth to a daughter named Blanche of France, Duchess of Orleans. Upon this birth, Philip was named king and crowned at the cathedral in Rheims on 29 May 1328. After his elevation to the throne, Philip sent the abbot of Feckhamp, Pierre Roger, to summon Edward Roman III of England to pay homage for the Duchy of Aquitaine and Gascony. After a subsequent second summons from Philip, Edward finally arrived at the Cathedral of Amiens on 6 June 1329 and worded his vows in such a way to cause more disputes in later years. The dynastic change had another consequence. Charles Roman IV had also been King of Navarre, but, unlike the Crown of France, the Crown of Navarre was not subject to Salic law. Philip VI was neither an heir nor a descendant of Joan I of Navarre, whose inheritance the Kingdom of Navarre as well as the counties of Champagne, Troyes, Meaux, and Brie had been in personal union with the Crown of France for almost fifty years, and had long been administered by the same royal machinery established by King Philip Roman IV, the father of French bureaucracy. These counties were closely entrenched in the economic and administrative entity of the crown lands of France, being located adjacent to Isle de France. Philip, however, was not entitled to that inheritance. The rightful heiress was the surviving daughter of his cousin King Louis X, the future Joan Roman II of Navarre, the heir general of Joan I of Navarre. 
Navarre thus passed to Joan Roman II, with whom Philip struck a deal regarding the counties in Champagne. She received vast lands in Normandy adjacent to the fief in Evieux that her husband Philip Roman III of Navarre owned as compensation, and he kept Champagne as part of the French crown lands. Reign Philip's reign was plagued with crises, although it began with a military success in Flanders at the Battle of Castle, August 1328, where Philip's forces reseated Louis, I Count of Flanders, who had been unseated by a popular revolution. Philip's wife, the able Joan the Lame, gave the first of many demonstrations of her competence as regent in his absence. Philip initially enjoyed relatively amicable relations with Edward Roman III, and they planned a crusade together in 1332, which was never executed. However, the status of the Duchy of Aquitaine remained a sore point, and tension increased. Philip provided refuge for David Roman II of Scotland in 1334, and declared himself champion of his interests, which enraged Edward. By 1336, they were enemies, although not yet openly at war. Philip successfully prevented an arrangement between the Avignon Papacy and Holy Roman Emperor Louis Roman IV, although in July 1337, Louis concluded an alliance with Edward Roman III. The final breach with England came when Edward offered refuge to Robert Roman III of Artois, formerly one of Philip's trusted advisers, after Robert committed forgery to try to obtain an inheritance. As relations between Philip and Edward worsened, Robert's standing in England strengthened. On 26 December 1336, Philip officially demanded the extradition of Robert to France. On 24 May 1337, Philip declared that Edward had forfeited Aquitaine for disobedience and for sheltering the king's mortal enemy, Robert of Artois. Thus began the Hundred Years' War, complicated by Edward's renewed claim to the throne of France in retaliation for the forfeiture of Aquitaine. Hundred Years' War Philip entered the Hundred Years' War in a position of comparative strength. France was richer and more populous than England, and was at the height of its medieval glory. The opening stages of the war, accordingly, were largely successful for the French. At sea, French privateers raided and burned towns and shipping all along the southern and southeastern coasts of England. The English made some retaliatory raids, including the burning of a fleet in the harbor of Boulogne sur Mer, but the French largely had the upper hand. With his sea power established, Philip gave orders in 1339 to begin assembling a fleet off the Zealand coast at Slies. In June 1340, however, in the bitterly fought Battle of Slies, the English attacked the port and captured or destroyed the ships there, ending the threat of an invasion. On land, Edward Roman III largely concentrated upon Flanders and the Low Countries, where he had gained allies through diplomacy and bribery. A raid in 1339, the first Chevici into Picardy ended ignominiously, when Philip wisely refused to give battle. Edward's slender finances would not permit him to play a waiting game, and he was forced to withdraw into Flanders and return to England to raise more money. In July 1340, Edward returned and mounted the siege of Tournai. By September 1340, Edward was in financial distress, hardly able to pay or feed his troops, and was open to dialogue. After being at Bouvines for a week, Philip was finally persuaded to send Joan of Valois, Countess of Hainaut, to discuss terms to end the siege. On 23 September 1340, a nine-month truce was reached. So far, the war had gone quite well for Philip and the French. While often stereotyped as chivalry besotten incompetence, Philip and his men had in fact carried out a successful Fabian strategy against the debt plagued Edward and resisted the chivalric blandishments of single combat or a combat of two hundred knights that he offered. In 1341, the War of the Breton Succession allowed the English to place permanent garrisons in Brittany. However, Philip was still in a commanding position during negotiations arbitrated by the Pope in 1343. He refused Edward's offer to end the war in exchange for the Duchy of Aquitaine in full sovereignty. The next attack came in 1345, 
when the Earl of Derby overran the Agenized lost twenty years before in the War of St. Sardos and took Angeline, while the forces in Brittany under Sir Thomas Dagworth also made gains. The French responded in the spring of 1346 with a massive counter-attack against Aquitaine, where an army under John, Duke of Normandy, besieged Derby at Aiglin. On the advice of Godfrey Harcourt, like Robert Roman III of Artois, a banished French nobleman, Edward sailed for Normandy instead of Aquitaine. As Harcourt predicted, the Normans were ill-prepared for war, and many of the fighting men were at Aiglin. Edward sacked and burned the country as he went, taking keen and advancing as far as Poissy, and then retreating before the army Philip had hastily assembled at Paris. Slipping across the Somme, Edward drew up to give battle at Cressy. Close behind him, Philip had planned to halt for the night and reconnoiter the English position before giving battle the next day. However, his troops were disorderly, and the roads were jammed by the rear of the army coming up, and by the local peasantry furiously calling for vengeance on the English. Finding them hopeless to control, he ordered a general attack as evening fell. Thus began the Battle of Cressy. When it was done, the French army had been annihilated, and a wounded Philip barely escaped capture. Fortune had turned against the French. The English seized and held the advantage. Normandy called off the siege of Adelin and retreated northward, while Sir Thomas Dagworth captured Charles of Blois in Brittany. The English army pulled back from Cressy to mount the siege of Calais. The town held out stubbornly, but the English were determined, and they easily supplied across the English Channel. Philip led out a relieving army in July 1347, but unlike the siege of Tournai, it was now Edward who had the upper hand. With the plunder of his Norman expedition, and the reforms he had executed in his tax system, he could hold to his siege lines and await an attack that Philip dared not deliver. It was Philip who marched away in August, and the city capitulated shortly thereafter. Final Years After the defeat at Cressy and loss of Calais, the estates of France refused to raise money for Philip, halting his plans to counter-attack by invading England. In 1348 the Black Death struck France and in the next few years killed one-third of the population, including Queen Joan. The resulting labor shortage caused inflation to soar, and the king attempted to fix prices, further destabilizing the country. His second marriage to his son's betrothed Blanche of Navarre alienated his son and many nobles from the king. Philip's last major achievement was the acquisition of the Dauphine and the territory of Montpelier in the Languedoc in 1349. At his death in 1350, France was very much a divided country filled with social unrest. Philip V.I. died at Coulomb's Abbey, Eure et Loire, on 22 August 1350, and is interred with his first wife, Joan of Burgundy, in St. Denis Basilica, though his viscera were buried separately at the now demolished church of Couventis Jacobins in Paris. He was succeeded by his first son by Joan of Burgundy, who became John Roman II. Marriages and Children In July 1313, Philip married Joan the Lame French, Jean, daughter of Robert Roman II, Duke of Burgundy, and Agnes of France, the youngest daughter of King Louis Roman IX of France. Their children were the following. King John Roman II of France, 26 April 1319, 8 April 1364. Marie of France, 1326, 22 September 1333, who married John of Brabant, the son and heir of John Roman III, Duke of Brabant, but died shortly afterwards. Louis born and died 17 January 1329. Louis VIII, June 1330, 23 June 1330. A son, John, born and died, 2 October 1333. A son, 28 May 1335, stillborn, stillborn, stillborn. Philip of Orleans, 1 July 1336, 1 September 1375, Duke of Orleans. Joan, born and died, November 1337. A son, born and died, summer 1343, after Joan died in 1349. Philip married Blanche of Navarre, 
daughter of Queen Joan Roman II of Navarre and Philip Roman III of Navarre, on 11 January 1350. They had one daughter, Joan Blanche of France, May 1351, 16 September 1371, who was intended to marry John I of Aragon, but who died during the journey. In fiction, Philip is a character in Les Roy's Maudit's The Accursed Kings, a series of French historical novels by Maurice Duan. He was portrayed by Benoit Bryany in the 1972 French miniseries adaptation of the series and by Malik Zidi in the 2005 adaptation.